Good afternoon and thanks for joining us right here on Midday Kentucky, everyone. Friday, well, it's not Friday Eve, it's Thursday. Is, do you call that Friday Eve? Friday yeah. Eve. What yep. I do know Friday. is Thursday <laughs> is the night to watch ABC 36 for TGI... T? TGIT. TGIT. <laughs> I was this, I was like, oh gosh, don't let me forget the last initial. <laughs> um, because of our favourite shows. But you know what I do? Thursday nights are not good for me because I stay up super late. Yeah. Because what I do is I watch, I, I record the shows mm -hmm. and then I speed through so I can just see, get the gist of it and then I go back and watch the whole oh. thing. I will always watch them on Fridays <laughs> after work. Oh, do you now? Well, I go to bed before they come on. Yeah, I know. You <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing good. What's going on? Not a whole lot. Okay, we've got some interesting topics to talk about a little bit later mm -hmm. on in the top of the show. But first of all, we want to talk a little bit more about historical black women who made a lasting mark on history. And of course, who could forget Harriet Tubman? Tubman was born a slave on the east coast of Maryland. And so what's, what are you laughing at, people? Tubman. <laughs> Tubman. Okay, th <laughs> thank you for allowing me to make a fool of myself. Well, you only said again. it once and thank you, you said it again. I, I know, I can you. see you both <laughs> laughing. And I'm thinking, okay, I've mispronounced someone's name. I was going to tell you if it happened. I was okay, gonna correct coast of time. Maryland and suffered through harsh conditions. She later became famous as a conductor on the Underground Railway during the 1850s. And Tubman is... Tubman. 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 <laughs> see, now it's going to be stuck. <laughs> escaped slavery in the 1849. And regardless of the bounty on her head, Tubman returned to, to the South almost 20 times to lead her family and hundreds of slaves to freedom throughout the Underground Railroad. One amazing, of the bravest women, women in yep. history. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Impressive. We also want to highlight this afternoon Daisy Bates. She was a journalist, a civil rights activist, and she underwent economic, legal, and physical intimidation to pave the way for racial equality. Her most notable act of equality was her hand in the integration of public schools in Little Rock, Arkansas. She went on to become a major supporter of the National Association for the Advancement of Color People. There it is. And last up, we have a woman who made her mark on the world of rock and earned herself the title of godmother of rock and roll, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Tharp is credited with popularizing gospel music among black and white audiences during the 30s and 40s. Tharp would play in churches and secular clubs, sharing her talents with the world. Tharp toured up until her death in 1973. I've never Ooh. heard of her. Oh, she's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You, have you heard her music? Yes, I have. Uh, she's is fantastic. she like really rock and roll? Or? Uh, it's, it's the but early version, gospel. you know. Okay. More of a gospel uh, bend to it. But I mean, it, kind of a blues. I mean, she had, she was all over. I mean, she was a fantastic artist, especially hmm. at that time during that era. It's amazing. And you being the rock and roll queen of, you know, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I just like making you go red. Yeah. I don't know why. It just enjoy. It just makes my <laughs> afternoon. Hey, I just thought this was really interesting, and there were a couple of stories in here that I didn't feel were real, which we didn't put up. Uh -huh. But they are some random facts that people don't know. Okay, about things about necessarily in America or. I just saw them and I thought it would be really interesting to share. Okay. Ketchup was sold as a medicine in 1830, 30 years before Heinz started bottling up and selling the stuff as a condiment. An Ohio physician, Katie, named Dr. John Cook Bennett through the tomato-based product was as good as Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> he said it could cure diarrhea, indigestion, and even concentrated ketchup into to a pill form to sell to the stomach-achy masses. I didn't know that. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe if you drink a bottle of it, you'll get diarrhea. I would think the acid level know. would be so high in it, it would uh, upset your stomach. Another one which I thought was interesting, Robert Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son, okay. was close to proximi proximity to three out of four presidential assassinations. Lincoln, his parents' eldest son, was supposed to be at Ford's theatre with his mum and dad the night the president was assassinated, but he stayed back at the White House less than a mile away instead. 16 years later, he watched President James Garfield get fatally shot at six Street train station in Washington DC. Even weirder, Lincoln was at the Pam Pan American Exposition uh, in Buffalo. Yep. Yes, in Buffalo, New York, when President William McKinley was assassinated in 1901. Hmm. 
Mm. I hope they're not implying that he was could be part of all of this. Wow. Fake news, maybe I just <laughs> read just there. <laughs> hey, yeah. and the next one, this is really interesting. If you're being violent or drunk in Japan, the police will get a futon and roll you into a burrito. In fact, Japanese police officers <laughs> are rarely known to use guns or violence at all. So if you're acting drunk or acting violent, they're going to wrap you up in the futon and carry you over to the station to calm you down instead of potentially instigating more hostility. I love it. Do you like that? I do. I, th I think I sort of like that one. <laughs> I it's don't effective. believe it. But oh, you don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> you think that's fake? I think maybe it's happened, but I don't think that that's just that's what like they do. That's like common practice. Because you could just arrest people or put them in a straight jacket till they calm down. I don't know. I don't think they roll you up in a futon, but good idea. Oh. <laughs> I just don't think that really happens. Okay. Well, maybe you won't believe this one either. All mammals take about 12 seconds to poop regardless of size. That's fact, okay. they say. Okay. Yeah. Number no, five. Never thought about that before. Neither did I. <laughs> Number five. Let's just move this along. And then Miami is the only major U.S. city founded by a woman. Hmm. Does oh, anyone wow. know if that's incorrect or true? I don't know. I couldn't find anything different on the internet when I looked at it. Yeah. And what I thought this was really interesting. Mm -hmm. Anxious, uh, anxious travelers can play with mini horses at a Kentucky airport. Twice a month, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport brings in two adorable mini horses named Denver and Ruby from a nearby farm to help nervous jet setters feel relaxed. Has, has anyone heard that? No, anyone and I haven't the seen them there. Room? What a great no, idea, though. I haven't Everyone's heard that, but a lot of airports do that. They walk around with like therapy dogs, dogs. and stuff like I've that. Heard so of that. I believe it. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, well, did Kentucky. you hear just recently there was a blind man that is petrified of dogs? So um, one of the uh, workers said, why don't, you, why don't we look at getting a miniature horse, mm -hmm. like a mini tiny little horse. Right. So, and they're training that mini horse to be the guide, eye. the seeing yeah. The horse? Eyed horse. Eyed horse. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. So I mean, a horse yeah. is very smart animal. They Don't are very smart, funny? very loving. But, but how are they going to train the horse to poop and pee outside the house when it's time? They'll train it. They're really? smart. Yeah, yeah they can train it. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, studies show that 80% of people abandon their New Year's resolutions come February 1. Here we are, people. <laughs> February 8 or 9? <clears throat> Here we are. Eight. All right. What was your resolution? I was going to drink more water, which I am doing. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. How many do you drink a day? Um, I, I felt like I was already drinking um, water, but I wanted to make an effort to drink water in the morning. So I'll do a, just a large glass right when I okay. get up. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you? I wanted to work out, um, kind of change up my workout routine. And I did that. I started up with Lydia, and um, she's been whipping me into shape. So I'm still hanging in there for dear life. Well, you haven't really been that often. <laughs> I go once a week to you see Lydia. You haven't been every week this I, year. I, I Let's be real. Week. Oh my gosh, he is such a watchdog. No, I've been well, there just almost every week. Almost every week. Oh Have you been there every week? Yes. Every Absolutely week? every week. I don't go as much as I uh, pay to go, mm -hmm. but I do go every week. Okay. No, I've never missed a week. Good. But Good I might miss you. three twice. Now out I do of that work out. Times. I do work out in another gym too. I, I, can, I do gym. both. So yeah, that's a good. You know. job. Well, Daddy <laughs> Mail Online asked two top personal trainers their advice for staying focused on fitness goals and how to get back in the groove if you've already given up on them. From reevaluating your goals and managing your stress, you ready to this one? To having more sex. They revealed their most unusual and effective ways to stay focused even after January. Studies show that 80% of people abandon their New Year's resolution. Now here's the saying, change your resolutions to concrete goals. So Katie, if they're saying change it, you're going to have to drink more water? No, I think it's just saying if my... Uh, mine already is fairly concrete that it was the morning water that I wanted. Yeah. I think if I had the general goal of just drink yeah. more water, mm -hmm. an example would be I will do it by every morning drinking 16 ounces. And that's a concrete, gotcha. but a concrete thing. thing that you well, wanted. they were saying the next one, which is, you know, I guess I don't know whether that's a New Year's goal, whether you keep this up. You see, you say on New Year's Eve, hey, I'm going to have more sex this year. Is that a goal? <laughs> I don't know. This is what they're saying, that if that was your goal, to reevaluate it, now we need to worry about it now because February mightn't have got into bed as much as we thought we were going to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? They're saying it's get a good workout partner. That's what they're saying is, you know, get it all happening. Number mm -hmm. three, let's bring that one up as well. Reason your goals. Um, reassess your goals to find out what's not working. You know, 
I was just saying before we're off mm. camera, it was probably what, three weeks ago that I said I was going vegan? Mm -hmm. I am struggling yeah. now. And I, it wasn't a resolution, but I feel it is in mm -hmm. a way. Okay? okay. It's feeling, I'm feeling a little but bit But you're hanging in month. there. I mean, you're, you're. Well, I'm ready for one of those cookies it. that we're about to talk <laughs> about. Have we got one more, Sam? To have one more resolution that we, we needed to look at? Look at yourself in the mirror naked. No. <laughs> To what, shame yourself? I don't like I know. that at all. That's what they're saying to do. This is these two top personal trainers are saying to get to kick you in the butt and get you going again. Manage stress and don't be too hard on yourself. Well, that's to me contradicts itself. I like the Looking at yourself in the mirror, yeah. let's just say you have a weight loss goal, all right? And you have not been doing it. Yeah. Okay, then you look at yourself in the mirror. Then the fifth one, it says, don't be too hard on yourself. Right. I'm not saying that these are correct people. I'm just saying this is the story. Right, right. And I'm thinking, should we be listening to that? I, you know, I think the looking in the mirror, it's almost like body shaming yourself. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I like the concrete But you look ideas, in the mirror though. every day. Right, right. I yeah. do, and everybody does. But it's, you know, being critical of your body like that, I think, you know, that just plays into everything that society is already doing to us anyway. I feel like the concrete goals is really what the main gist should be if you've got if you've got a concrete goal like you know losing 10 pounds in in you know two months mm. that's a realistic goal you can achieve it and it, that's something that you can chip off every right. single week you can tick off you okay. know um, how many pounds you've I lost you. and follow that as long as it's a concrete thing that you can see and really um, grab onto I just think but do we put too much pressure on ourselves we do, of course we to do. Worry about goals and and I, see, don't, I don't make. I resolutions. don't like resolutions, and that's why this year I just pick something easy, mm -hmm. drink a glass of water in the morning. So, I'm not personally hard on myself with resolutions like that because I don't make them. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. Well, should you then? <laughs> no, I don't think I should. <laughs> okay, my friend Katie, we are talking about dating men under. 30. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was interesting. I saw uh, this blog post online. To well, I'm to gonna be? tell you oh, the good. story. So the dad says he's teaching his daughters not to date men under 30 unless you just want them for sex. He says no men are capable of selfless love until after 30. Really? Why yeah. does he have the cutoff like right at 30? Why I know. isn't it like 28 so or 32? So how old were you 32? when you met Doug? And did you feel okay, that he was mature? I was, <laughs> I was, I was 27 okay. when I met Doug. I did feel like he was mature. He was he was very mature. Is he he was. 27 also? I know you're similar um, Yeah, age. he's he's a year younger than me. Okay. So he, you know. Well, he was a journalist then or? Um, he, he was, yes, he was hosting a TV show and he was, he was working for a television station that also had a radio station and he was working for both. Right. So he was doing sales, he was doing on-air stuff, everything. And um, so that's where we met. He, he was very mature uh, for his age, I felt like. And uh, I think that's part of why I was really attracted to him too. Mm. Because I'd had, I had been dating before I met him and was currently dating when I met him. And so I kind of like kicked a lot of those yeah, uh, guys I feel like it's when true. I, met I think uh, all of my male friends, you know, I'm 28, I'm almost 29, and I think of my male friends or family members even in my life that are mid-20s, I wouldn't yeah. set them up with any of my friends. Not that they're dogs or anything, good yeah. people, but I just don't think are ready for that. You right. know, they're not I'm glad mean. they're not dogs. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think that I'm not labeling mid-20s as like a player. Yeah. I just don't think that they're ready for that type of relationship yeah. where I think, I think women become a little... I, I think earlier. so too. I was ready. But I think we all know that, that men, you know, under 30 are still getting their career together, still, mm -hmm. you know, beating off the boys weekend away, Sowing you know, their and things like that. And <laughs> I think at 30, they sort of think in their heads that, geez, now it's time to okay. become more realistic. <laughs> all right, no? yeah. Maybe, I think Like that you're, the people you date have always been mm -hmm. over 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I've, I've dated <laughs> some younger people in their 20s and you know one of them at the time um, Cameron he as I said to you was not the most beautiful person in the world mm -hmm. but mentally was so he was the editor of a magazine one of Australia's biggest magazines he everything was together yeah mm -hmm. but I have to say in the relationship he really sucked yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean like yeah he wasn't 
good in that part of his life. Yeah, yeah. He was great in everything else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, well, I also feel like um, men sometimes, this is a generalization, feel that they need more life steps checked off before they're ready for that serious relationship. Yeah. Good Want the call. career, the fa you know, yep. be in the right place yeah. before the relationship. Yes. Where I think women are more open to building that together. No, you're yes. right, actually. I don't know. Yeah, That's I think good. so too. Voice of reason again, <laughs> Katie. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, up next, everyone, we have a tasty segment. Learn how you can grab your favourite box of Girl Scout cookies. You're watching Midday Kentucky, everyone. Reevaluate your goals.